everybody. Happy March. We made it to another March. Um, these types of videos I have seen first on Emma's channel on Spooky Astronauts and also Sarah's channel, Possessed by Horror. And these are just like my favorite kinds of videos to watch. So I said, I'm doing one. Just in case you haven't seen one of these videos before, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna go through everything I watched in the month of February on Letterboxd and just give you a little rundown. I do watch a mix of horror and non-horror. Some months I watch way more horror than anything else, but other months it's more of a mixed bag. But I have been watching a lot of movies lately, so I thought it might be fun to go over all of them with you. So I have got my letterboxed here. It looks like I've watched about 38 movies this month. Um, so some I'll be talking about longer than others. We'll see what happens. Sorry, I'm gonna be looking down a lot. Eye contact. Okay, so the first movie I watched in the month of February was Porno on Shudder, which was so good. It was so much fun. I really recommend it. I had a really good time. I gave it three and a half stars. I thought this movie was super funny. Um, if you aren't familiar with it, it's about this group of teens that works at a movie theater and they watch a porno, the titular porno, all together and it unleashes this succubus onto the movie theater and it's just, it's a load of fun. It also has a spectacular piece of gore in it. If you've seen the movie, I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about, but it's unlike anything I've seen in any other movie. <laughs> it's, um, it's really special. To be noted, the redheaded kid from High School Musical, the musical, the series is in this, giving a fantastic performance. All the performances are really good. It's just some great, pretty mindless fun. I've seen a lot of people say it's not as edgy as they wanted it to be, or they just didn't find it funny at all, which is fair. We all have different senses of humor, but I enjoyed it a lot. Ooh, okay, the next thing I watched was The Neon Demon. It's an Elle Fanning movie, and she's this young girl that moves to LA to become a model and just gets involved in some very seedy situations. And then it turns into a full tilt, full tilt horror movie. There's also a surprise appearance by Keanu Reeves, and he's just wonderful. I think any movie would benefit from a surprise appearance by Keanu Reeves. Um, but this movie was weird. It was it was a lot weirder than I was expecting it to be. I think I thought I was getting into a sort of straightforward, like Hollywood is hell type of thing, which it is that as well, but dude, it's weird. I do remember thinking that the movie was like way too long. I think it would have benefited from 85, 90 minute runtime. I think that would have been perfect for something like this. Uh, Cause it's really, really pretty to look at. There's a lot of really spectacular visuals. But by the time we got near the end of the movie, it had just felt like it was on for so long. But I will say the very, very end of the movie, if you've seen it, it gets wild. So it almost made me forget that I was kind of annoyed about how long it took to get there. But very creative, very interesting movie. If that sounds like something you'd like, I say give it a go. Okay, we're gonna gloss over this. The next movie I watched was called The Missing Link. This requires some backstory. My friend and I have a tradition of staying up too late and watching just terrible, low-budget gay movies. And this was one of those. It was terrible. I gave it half a star. It was so bad. I was like angry by the time we finished the movie. Not that you care, but it's a movie about cavemen. And then there's one gay caveman and then all the cavemen turn gay, kind of. I literally don't remember. Hold on. What we'll about gay cavemen? When an unexpected outsider arrives in their camp, a microcosmic group of cavemen and women find their world. Oh yeah, there's something like the cave women all refuse to do their cave woman duties or something. It's like about gender and it was just, it was really bad. For context, we often like to have drinking games with these movies and one of our rules was drink every time there is a racism done. And boy, were we hammered. Yeah, this movie's not good. Um, I shouldn't have spent so long talking about it. I'm sorry. The next thing I watched is also off-brand, but I watched the documentary Fake Famous on HBO. 
I actually watched this twice. I don't know if I logged it twice, but I did watch it twice. Um, I didn't like it. I like the concept a lot because I'm really fascinated by the sheer amount of people on the internet who have millions of followers that are all bots. I think that's a really interesting subject. If you don't know, this documentary was like a social experiment where the director held a casting call for people who wanted to be internet famous. And then he faked their celebrity, like he made it look like they're at these fancy hotels and on these great vacations and getting these private gym sessions and it was all a lie. And he bought them a bunch of bot followers and likes and spoiler alert, spoiler alert for fake famous, click off if you wanna watch fake famous. Uh, but one of the girls, it actually worked. Like she's an Instagram celebrity now. She has like 300,000 followers and like gets all kinds of sponsored shit and free stuff and it, like that's that's fine. I'm not mad at her, good for her. But I just thought the documentary was stupid as hell. <laughs> it was also weird because the other two people who were participating, these two guys, they both kind of dropped out and like didn't want to do it anymore. So I just didn't really see the point of making a documentary where two of your three participants just stop doing it. It was odd to me, I didn't like it. The next thing I watched, I watched Creep. I had never seen Creep before. I've heard lots of good things about Creep, but just never watched it. I loved this movie so much. I almost gave it five stars. I really think I only didn't give it five stars because there were so many jump scares. And on this channel, we know how I feel about jump scares. When they're excessive and stupid, they piss me off. And this movie loved its jump scares. If you don't know, Creep is about this filmmaker who gets hired off an ad on Craigslist to go and document this man's day. And the story he has is that he's about to have a baby with his wife and he has some kind of cancer that's terminal and he wants to film this diary to his unborn child before he dies. Um, I'm looking at, sorry, I see the picture of the wolf head in my peripheral and it is distracting me. <laughs> I thought this movie was so scary and so fun and I found the setup really plausible, which can be really hard when you're making a found footage movie. Like this just seemed like something that could happen so easily. And it was so scary and the performances were so natural and I loved it a whole lot. I'm so happy that I'm doing this because I kind of already forgot about Creep, but now I'm remembering how much I loved it. It's so good. Okay, and then the next day I watched Hot Rod and no, your eyes do not deceive you. I absolutely watched Hot Rod two times in one day. If you look at my profile, Hot Rod is one of my favorite movies. I just think it is a perfect comedy. I've seen it so many times and I laugh so hard every time. It's just, it's perfect and I was having a bad day, leave me alone. I can watch Hot Rod as many times as I want, don't judge me. If you haven't seen Hot Rod, you should correct that immediately. Uh, but it stars Andy Samberg who plays a stuntman who has just a really tense relationship with his stepfather. And his whole thing is just that he wants to beat his stepfather in a physical fight to prove that he's a man. But then it is revealed that his stepfather has a heart condition. He needs a heart transplant. And then Rod's like, well, I can't fight you if you're a sick, sick old man, because then it won't mean anything. So he stages this very spectacular jump where he's going to raise all the money that Frank needs for his heart transplant. And it's just, it's the silliest, stupidest movie, but good God, is it funny. Pools are perfect for holding water. And as we all know, I love Bill Hader very much. Here's a picture of me as Bill Hader from Hot Rod for Halloween. Uh, he's just excellent in this movie. Everyone is so funny. Sissy Spacek is in this movie. Horror connection, Carrie. Boom, go watch Hot Rod. He's going in circles! And then the same day I watched Creep 2, which I didn't like as much as I liked the first Creep. I just had such a good experience with that first one, but it's still really, really good. It's basically the same plot all over again. It's a different videographer, a woman this time, hey. Um, and she shows up to film the same guy. And as he was before, he is a creep. And there is some more different, interesting stuff going on with this. I think it is a different dynamic because she's a woman instead of a man. So that provides some more interesting stuff going on. Um, and they're, these movies, they're just fun. They're scary and they're fun and I think they're a really good time. Okay, and then the next movie I watched was The Murder of Nicole Brown Simpson, which 
I knew, I knew getting into this. I knew what this movie was. I knew how bad it was gonna be. I knew it was just probably gonna make me angry. And it did. I gave it half a star. It was boring. I really think I fell asleep. I don't, I either fell asleep or it was just so boring. I don't remember what happened. Um, I do remember thinking it was funny seeing the actor who played Kris Jenner in her little Kris Jenner wig. That just made me laugh. But I really, oh, I think, I think it's implied that O.J. Simpson didn't murder his wife, but like a, a ghost did. Like there was a ghost, but then there was also just like a vagabond, random other serial killer who broke in and killed Nicole Brown Simpson. Like I, I, this movie was just very insistent that O.J. didn't kill his wife, which I think is an interesting take. Um, no, I do not, I don't recommend it. The next movie that I watched was Mulholland Drive. I was on this kick where I was only watching movies that were set in LA because I'm in Chicago right now and the past month the weather has not been good. It's just been a sheet of ice and snow and it makes me pretty miserable. So I've been pretending I'm in sunny Southern California by watching all these movies. Um, Mulholland Drive really scratched that itch for me. And it was also just a movie that's been on my watch list for a long time. I love David Lynch, I love Twin Peaks. So I was like, sooner or later, I gotta watch Mulholland Drive. And it did not disappoint. And do not ask me what this movie is about. Do not ask me what happens in this movie. You know I don't know, but I loved it. I gave it four and a half stars. But it's really great. It's really beautiful. It's so David Lynch. I just, I liked it a whole lot. Oh, and I was so pleased to finally have the full context for that jump scare that's on every list you see of like scariest jump scares or best jump scares of all time. It's a pretty good one. I will say it's a pretty good one. Oh, once again, not a horror movie, but I rewatched Easy A. I had a great time. I think it holds up pretty well. As a movie from 2010, I think there's some off-color moments that make me go, ah, while I'm watching. But, you know, I had a good time. I love Emma Stone. God bless her. Fun movie. That same day, I watched Zombievers. I put on Zombievers thinking, this is gonna be bad, this is gonna be stupid is gonna be good to have on in the background. All those things are true. It is bad and stupid and good to have on in the background, but it's also like a sincerely funny movie. Like I was laughing not at the movie, I was laughing with the movie. I was so surprised. And no, the Zombievers do not look good, but do you want the Zombievers to look good? Is that really what you're after in a movie like this? Because it was not for me. If you couldn't tell by the title, Zombievers is a movie about a group of hot teens who go to a lakeside cabin for a weekend, and then there are zombie beavers that come to fuck their shit up, and it's, it's, it's just great. I was sitting in my bed watching this movie in the middle of the night, and I sat up, pumped my fists, and cheered when the one girl said, they're zombie beavers. It was, it's a good, it's a good payoff. Okay, and then you'll see I began my rewatch of the Saw movies, they added all the Saw movies onto HBO Max, my preferred streaming service. And so I said, now is as good a time as any to re-watch all of these movies. I have not watched these movies since I think middle school was the last time I, the last and first time I watched them. And I remember like sitting in my bed in my parents' house and being like very afraid of these movies. And it was kind of like a first delve into like modern horror movies at the time for me. So I do have kind of very fond memories of these movies. And I think the first Saw movie is an incredible movie. I think it gets a lot of shit because as the franchise goes on, the movies stop being as good, which is definitely accurate. But this first movie is incredible. And I'm certainly not the first person to point this out, but I do think it's really evident that they took all the worst parts from this first movie into the later movies in the franchise as like, this must be what people like. People liked it so much when that man sawed his foot off, we're just gonna keep doing that but worse for all the rest of the movies. And I think that's how it became this torture porn franchise, which is not what is so great about this first movie, even though him cutting his foot off is a great fucking scene. And the ending of this movie, I will never forget the first time I watched it, 
rocked me to my core. It is such a good twist. It is such a good reveal. The music building and the lighting and the cut to the credits. I am I am worked up just talking about the end of Saw. It's it's great. It's great. It's Saw. It's great. Relax. Go home. Go to bed. And then you'll see I do like them less and less as there are more and more movies. Saw 2 I really didn't like. It's one I do remember liking when I was a lot younger. I think I felt very edgy being like, they throw the girl in the needle pit and it's awesome. But it's really not. It's not pleasant to watch. I don't... I'm looking at my review right now and I'm remembering there's a line where... <laughs> There's a line where Jigsaw says, I literally drove myself to suicide when he's talking about driving off a cliff. And that just kind of sets the bar for how the writing decreases rapidly in this second movie. It's just, it's a tragic follow-up to a great movie. And then there's Saw 3, which I am struggling to remember what happens in Saw 3. Oh, Saw 3 is Jeff. Saw 3 is the one where this man's son was killed in a car accident and now he's like a terrible person and Jigsaw sets up all these traps with everyone who is even tangentially involved in his son's death and he has to decide whether or not to save them and he's just like a very unsympathetic character for a man whose young son just died like I just <laughs> I don't care about him at all which makes for it makes for a tough viewing experience. I do really like all the stuff with the other main character, the nurse, I believe, and she's like operating on Jigsaw's brain while he's awake, and I think that's pretty cool. So I like this one a little more than Saw 2. And that was all in one day, so I took a break from Saw. I believe that must have also been Friday. That must have been, I was watching The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs, and they were watching Tammy and the T-Rex. And I was so excited. I love Tammy and the T-Rex. I love Denise Richards. I love the T-Rex. I love Paul Walker. This is, this is an incredible movie. If you don't know, Tammy and the T-Rex is a movie starring Denise Richards and Paul Walker. They are teens. They are dating. Paul Walker gets in a tragic lion attack and dies. <laughs> I guess I can't say he's dead. He's body dead, but not brain dead but they put his brain into this robot T-Rex and then Denise Richards falls in love with the T-Rex because it's her boyfriend's brain and it's an incredible movie that you have to see. They have the gore cut on Shudder because they made the director recut this movie to have it released in theaters with way less blood and gore, but the version on Shudder was restored by Vinegar Syndrome and it is so much fun. There's just guts falling out of people and heads getting ripped off. It's, I, I love dinosaurs, I love Denise Richards. It's a perfect, perfect movie. Um, but it, it, you'll see I didn't give it five stars because it's very bad, but it's perfect, but it's very bad. The next movie that I watched was The Thing About Harry, which was almost a continuation of my gay midnight movie nights, uh, but it was a special Valentine's Day edition. I didn't know anything about this movie. It's on Freeform. You can watch it for free on the website, on the Roku app, whatever you have. You can watch it for free. Um, I didn't realize until we were watching this, but it's like a send up of When Harry Met Sally, which is one of my favorite, probably is my favorite rom-com of all time, now that I'm thinking about it. But here's the twist, folks. They're gay. So it's a story we all know and love. There's a guy, Harry. He's kind of a jerk. There's this other guy, Sam, who's very anal, type A, prim and proper. And you know those personalities don't mesh well, but it's just like the years-long story of their friendship and inevitable romance. And it was, it's really delightful. It was really heartwarming. And it's set in the great city of Chicago. So I really recommend it if that sounds like it's your type of thing. Oh, and then I spent my Valentine's Day watching Raw. If you don't know, I have a column on Nightmare on Film Street where I watch movies with my mom and subject her to all variety of horror movies. And for Valentine's Day, I thought Raw would be fun. Uh, you Feel free to read the article, but let me tell you, my mom didn't like it. She hated it. Uh, Raw is about this young woman who is studying to be a vet. She goes to a veterinary school where there's this really intense hazing process and they make all of the new students eat, I think it's a rabbit liver, I believe, or a kidney. It's some, some part of a rabbit that they have to eat it. But this girl, Justine, she's a vegetarian, but she has to eat it anyway. 
and she suffers some strange side effects. I, I don't want to give anything away if you haven't seen it because I think this movie's great. I think you should watch it. But oh my god, is it gory? Is it gross? There's some really intense stuff going on in this one, but I think it's also kind of really beautiful in a way. It's cool. It's a great movie. I really recommend it. And then as it was Valentine's Day, the next couple are also going to be off-brand, but then I watched When Harry Met Sally, because after watching The Thing About Harry, I just had to. I can make it related to horror though, because it was directed by Rob Reiner, who directed Stephen King's Misery, so that's a fun connection. This movie's just a classic. It is so sweet. It's so good. This is also one of my mom's favorite movies, so I've watched this movie a lot through my childhood and carried it into my adult life. I love it a lot. So not horror, but a very sweet rom-com spanning the decade-long friendship and relationship of Harry and Sally. But if you haven't seen it and you like rom-coms at all, I recommend it. I think it's just lovely. And then to round out my Valentine's Day, I watched Call Me By Your Name, which I have never seen. I'm a big fan of Luca Guadagnino's work through Suspiria and We Are Who We Are on HBO Max, uh, but I had never seen Call Me By Your Name before. And I said, what better time than Valentine's Day? And I also have a sneaking suspicion we're gonna find out something really terrible about Army Hammer sometime soon. So I wanted to make sure I watched this movie before that happened and I couldn't look at him again. But the good news is in this movie, you could really replace Army Hammer with any white man of that age and it'd be the same movie. So he's not, <laughs> him being Army Hammer is not too crucial. But I also love Timothy Chalamet, so it was nice to see him in this role that was such a big deal for his career. I got excited about Timothy Chalamet and I kicked the tripod and things are different now. But if you don't know, Call Me By Your Name is a movie set in Italy about a young boy, I shouldn't say young boy, I mean I guess he is a young boy, about a teenage boy and this older man who stays with his family as a research assistant for his father and the two of them build a relationship together and it's about them falling in love and navigating that tricky relationship. It's a simple movie. I think it's well shot. It's really well acted. It's just nice. It's just a nice movie. Okay, and then I finally tried watching Saw again. I watched Saw 4, which funnily enough, I remember being the point I stopped at when I was in middle school. It was something something happened to me with that opening scene where the one guy's mouth is sewn shut and the other guy's eyes are sewn shut and they have to like communicate with each other but they cannot and something about that was just too scary and too awful for me and i think i turned it off after that uh, but this time i watched the whole thing spoiler alert i have not carried on to watch saw 5 yet i've kind of halted because i realized i don't really like these <laughs> movies anymore uh, which is sad, because that first one, that first one is so good, and nothing will ever change that. Yeah, this movie I didn't like so much. I did give it one point above average. I gave it three stars, uh, because there are some really wild scene transitions <laughs> that I've never seen in my life before, so it got some bonus points for that. From this point on, I hope you enjoy watching my mascara steadily run down my face for the rest of the video. Cute. Then I watched Ganja and Hess, which I'm not going to talk too, too much about because that's what my whole last video was. But if you haven't seen that video, I liked it. It's very good. And hey, go watch it. Next, I watched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is Quentin Tarantino's latest movie. And I'm one of those people I love to be like, I hate Quentin Tarantino. I don't like Quentin Tarantino movies. But every Quentin Tarantino movie I have seen, I love, so that's just a lie. I love this movie. I love, I was still in my phase of needing to watch things in LA so I could feel better about my own surroundings. And this movie is really perfect for that. The shots of Hollywood at night and the neon signs lighting up, I could just weep. In case you aren't familiar with the movie, it's about Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt playing these two best friends, uh, Brad Pitt is a stuntman for Leonardo DiCaprio's character, who is an actor, and the Manson family cult is involved, 
and Margot Robbie plays Sharon Tate, she's involved. And it's just this really beautiful, epic saga, mainly focusing on this one day, but there's lots of time jumps forward. We get to see a few months later after that to see the aftermath, and we see flashbacks to days or weeks or even years before the time of the movie. And it's just good. It touches on a lot of things with like friendship and celebrity, and I just, I, I like it. I like it a lot. You, you win, Quentin. I like this movie a whole lot. Next up is The Intruder, and if you've seen my horror advent calendar video I did on The Gift, it's a very similar premise to that. Uh, unfortunately, kind of like a worse version of that. But who's in this movie? What's his name? Dennis Quaid! Dennis Quaid plays the titular intruder, and he's like hilarious in this role. I think he's really good. Um, if you aren't familiar with this movie or with The Gift, it's about this man who sells his house to this young couple and then he just kind of never leaves and he keeps showing up unannounced. It's fun. This is one I did have on like in the background while I was doing other stuff and I think it's very good for that. Um, but as a movie, not, it's not great. And that's fine, but no, I don't recommend. Later that day I watched The Disaster Artist. The Disaster Artist is a movie made by James Franco, and he and his brother Dave star in it, and it's about the making of Tommy Wiseau's The Room. If you are unfamiliar, uh, The Room is, I think, widely regarded as one of the worst movies ever made, and one of the actors who was in that movie wrote this sort of biography memoir about the making of the movie, and James Franco bought the rights to that real quick and turns it into a movie, and it's it's really funny. Um, it's a little heartbreaking too, actually. I was the kind of person who was very into The Room for a while. I would watch it all the time. I still have most of it memorized in the back of my brain, because I'm annoying. Um, but the only problem I have with this movie is that you can very much tell it's told from the perspective of this one guy. So it makes him out to be like this ultimate good guy, which, I wasn't there, it could be the case, but I'm always a little skeptical when something is told from a real person's point of view like that. But it's really fun, and if you like The Room, you'll probably like this. They do some scene recreations as they're filming the movie within the movie, and they are just so spot on, it's creepy. Then I watched the documentary Horror Noir on Shudder. I was doing some research for my Ganja and Hess video. Uh, I watched this over the summer, and I wanted to revisit it to just get things fresher in my head. It's also just, it's a really good documentary about the history of black people in horror movies and behind the camera of horror movies. And it's just a really thorough look from like King Kong to Get Out. And I think just anyone who's interested in film will like this. It's just great, I love it. It was very worth the rewatch. Then I watched The Evil Dead for the first time. I was just covering up a lot of blind spots this month, I think, but The Evil Dead has been on my watch list like forever. And like, I don't even want to fully get into it, but a lot of the reviews I've seen on Letterboxd mention the tree rape scene. I'm not, I'm not having a problem with the reviews themselves, but a lot of comments in the reviews are people who are very defensive of the tree rape scene and they like get mad when you say you think the movie would be better without the tree rape scene. And I just, I want to know why, but I, I don't think, I don't think I want to know why you feel that way. I think, I think that's just not correct. So I could do without the tree rape scene. I don't think that would make it a lesser movie for me, at least in my opinion. Um, but other than that, Oh, this movie is a whole lot of fun. I was smiling so hard. It's just so gross. The special effects are nuts. And, and I mean, people are like, it looks cheesy and it does, but I think it's really fun. Bruce Campbell's so cool. It's, I mean, it's a classic. You don't need me to tell you the Evil Dead's good. It is, I like it, I liked it a lot. Okay, the next thing I watched was Rabid, which came out in 2019. It's a remake of a Cronenberg movie from the 70s, I believe. And Rabid is about this woman who gets into a horrible accident and she gets like horrifically disfigured by it in, in a way that I almost find unbelievable. Like I, I refuse to believe like a doctor would leave her looking like that, but it's like it's making me like feel itchy thinking about it she like 
it would it would be such a terrible situation to be in it looks so bad but then going off of that she gets this like experimental stem cell transplant thing i'm i'm not a doctor i don't know what it is some kind of transplant thing to fix it and it it spirals her into a whole nother set of problems i'm trying to be vague it's not going well um but i thought it was good it was fine i think there's some really cool special effects work and design that's just really creative and fun to look at fun gross fun so like i liked how nasty they made it but the movie itself has a whole lot of flaws but if you can stream it for free it's on showtime if you have showtime why not i think that perhaps it just wasn't really my style which is fine then i watched barb and star go to vista del mar it's so fun it's so funny the way i described it to people was like at its best moments it reminded me of hot rod which is a extremely high compliment coming from me it's just so fucking goofy and weird and i love when like a big budget big name movie like this is just weird and jamie dornan from the 50 shades of gray movie is in this doing a complete 180 from his typical character and i found it so refreshing and so funny he's funny who knew he was funny why did they make him so boring in 50 shades when he can be this funny but if you don't know about barb and star i'll be quick about it because i know it's not horror but it stars kristen wig and annie momolo and they play these best friends who have never left their little midwestern town and they go on vacation to vista del mar in florida uh, but at the same time there's this evil team that's trying to blow up Vista Del Mar, and so they get wrapped up in all kinds of wacky shenanigans. But it's so, so funny. It's just, it's really a feel-good movie that we all need at this moment. Oh, okay, again, not horror, but I watched Bo Burnham's Words, Words, Words. Um, I'm a big Bo Burnham fan. I've seen What and Make Happy live. I think he's so smart and so funny and so talented. Eighth Grade is another one of my favorite movies. I was so happy when that happened. It's just, it's so great to see someone do well. I'm, 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 this is not the Bo Burnham Power Hour. I'm getting ahead of myself, but not that I think this one is bad because he was 19 years old when he filmed it. But it's just so nice to see that like nugget of this artist he was gonna bloom into starting here. I am an artist, please God forgive me. He's just, he's, he's great. I love him. Okay, back to some horror. I watched Open 24 Hours, which was also on Shudder. This one is about a young woman who has just gotten out of prison, who gets a job working the overnight shift at this gas station convenience store type thing. And we see her suffering from various hallucinations and we see her see this figure appearing at the gas station. And so it's kind of that thing of, is there really a murderer there? Is it all in her head? What I really liked was this was just an entirely new but standard slasher movie, which I think is really fun and something I don't think I've seen in a really long time. I also liked the gore in this movie. It's really bloody and gross, which is always fun. It's just, it's just fun. And the acting was really good. The two lead performers were really, really strong. I liked them a lot. But despite that, I just didn't really like this movie. It was, it was odd. It's a really odd movie. And I don't wanna give anything away about it, so I'm trying to be vague, but it's just very convoluted and it's, everything's just presented in a very strange way that I, I didn't really like. I didn't like it. I think where it really suffered was with the writing. It just, it left me scratching my head sometimes. Just not my cup of tea. But you know what was my cup of tea? Willy's Wonderland. Oh man, I was so happy to be watching this movie. I had like a proper setup. I had popcorn and candy and a beer and I turned my lights off, had my galaxy lights on. I was so ready to experience this movie. I really like Nicolas Cage and I'm really happy he's taken on this role in the horror community and in the genre because he's so suited for it. I love how weird he is. I love that he just does whatever the fuck he wants. It's great, it's so fun. This movie is an hour and a half of Nicolas Cage killing robot animatronics at this Willy's Wonderland, which is like a Chuck E. Cheese 
Five Nights at Freddy's type deal. And it's exactly that. I feel like my only complaints are the same complaints a lot of people have, which is when they switch to using CGI for the animatronics, it just looks less cool. I would have much preferred if it was just practical effects the whole time. It just didn't look as cool as it could have, which is sad. But good lord is this fun. If you don't know, Nicolas Cage does not have a single speaking line in the entire movie. He does not utter a single word, and his performance is so good. It's so Nicolas Cage. It's weird, it's violent, and it's it, it makes me really happy. It was a blast. Then I watched Saint Maud, which was another one I've been waiting. I've been waiting a very long time for Saint Maud, as has everybody. I've been looking forward to this movie for, I guess, almost two years, I think. Which is unfortunate, because I think when you're looking forward to something for so long, it's like impossible for it to ever fully live up to what you build it up to in your head. Which is not to say that this movie isn't great, because Saint Maud is so good. But like I said in my letterbox review, I know that this could have been a perfect movie for me. Like this could have been how I felt when I saw Midsummer. Like I could have felt that same way, I know it. But like I said, all the buildup and having to watch it in my house, not that I would want to go to a movie theater right now. I prefer to be safe and watch movies at home. But if I could have watched it in a movie theater, if I hadn't waited so long for it, and I also think if I hadn't seen a trailer for it, because there were a lot, there's a lot of stuff in the trailer that when it happened in the movie, I was like, yeah, th that's when this is coming. Because I watched the trailer a lot in anticipation for this movie, which I shouldn't have done. If you happen to be unfamiliar, Saint Maud is about a newly very religious young woman who is like an at-home nurse for people with terminal illnesses, terminal or chronic illnesses, I should say. And she decides or believes that she got a message from God that she has to save this woman. And it takes some turns. It's a very dark movie. I screamed out loud a couple of times. It's just, it's scary. I find it, I find it really like deeply scary, like way deep inside, it scares me. And of course, just really well acted, really beautiful to look at, some incredible visuals going on. And it's a quick watch too, it's really, I, I was gonna say it's like an easy breezy watch. It's not easy or breezy, but it is quick. <laughs> yeah, it's heavy. It's a pretty heavy movie, but it was it was just so right up my alley. And then I watched The Disaster Artist again. I promise I don't watch movies like twice in a row this often, but this does happen where I'll watch a movie by myself and then I want to watch it with someone else. And my roommate had mentioned The Disaster Artist and I said, let's watch it. And so I watched it twice. Sorry. The next movie I watched was another really delightful surprise, and it was The Crazies. The Crazies is another remake I watched this month uh, of a George Romero movie. The Crazies is about a town of people that gets infected by a mysterious virus that turns them crazy, for lack of a better word, because it's literally the title. But yeah, it's the it's very much the spirit of a zombie movie, even though they aren't technically zombies. It's people getting infected, other people trying not to be infected. Um, it stars Timothy Oliphant, who I adore. I think he's a really fun performer. But as you can imagine, it's about this small group of survivors trying to remain survivors. Uh, because the government comes and gets involved in trying to contain the crazies. So in addition to fighting off the crazies themselves, they have to stay away from the government who's trying to trap them. And it's really, really fun. I couldn't believe I hadn't heard more about this movie because it's just a blast. It's really just like sequence after sequence of really cool, scary, crazy fight going on. And sometimes that's all you need. The opening of this movie is really fantastic. I was so prepared to be playing some Animal Crossing and just having this on in the background. But that opening scene, I had to, I put my switch down and I was glued to the screen. I think that's just so that's so important to have a really strong opening like that. And this movie delivers, man. Another one I'm just gonna breeze right by. I watched a film called Buffering. This was also for Gay Midnight Movie Night. Uh, Buffering is about a couple who have a lot of, I guess, student debt. Um, and in order to pay their debt, they decide to sell videos of them having sex. Actually, what it is, 
is one of the guys decides to sell videos of them having sex without consulting his partner, which I take great issue with. But you know what? Actually, I'm I'm saying this movie is a horror movie. This movie is terrifying. There are like shots in it that look like they're straight out of a found footage movie. They look straight out of Creep. This movie's bone chilling. So it's a horror. I guess I recommend it. I gave it one and a half stars. <laughs> Then I watched Swallow, which is a movie about a pregnant woman suffering from pica, I believe is how you pronounce it. It's a disorder where you feel the urge to eat things that are not food, like rocks or, why well, can I only think of rocks? Or like coins, metal, just any non-food object, you wanna eat it. And you know, she eats some very frightening things, some things that disagree with her in violent ways and this may be a spoiler so cover your ears if you haven't seen this movie and don't want it spoiled but what i wasn't prepared for was the relationship with her husband is like very frightening and scary and that wasn't a layer i was thinking would be in this but it really is and it was very it was really disturbing i think but it was another gorgeous movie really well acted um what did i give it i gave it three and a half stars i thought it was really good. Um, I don't know, it, yeah, it made me feel bad. So I guess it did well. This was only yesterday, so it's still very fresh in my brain. Just a, a troubling movie, really, but super well done, very good. I do recommend it. And then the last movie I watched in the month of February, I think I finished it out at like 11.52 PM, so just under the wire, was The Silence of the Lambs. I was watching uh, Lindsay Ellis's new video about trans portrayal in media and how they are often villainized and it made me think I haven't watched Silence of the Lambs in a really long time. So I wanted to revisit it. I think the last time I watched it was probably in like high school. So I was interested to watch it again with my adult eyes and you know, it's still, it's still a perfect movie. It is so good. It is like really tricky and very unfortunate the rhetoric that surrounds this movie now of like trans people are evil because Buffalo Bill, which is just all kinds of disconnect have to happen in your brain for you to jump to that logic. But unfortunately that is what happens for some people and they use movies like this to defend that way of thinking. And that's so not okay, so not right and is very frustrating that it gets associated with movies like this that are so good. It's just so good. It's, I've, I know, I know everything that happens in this movie, but still each new scene is like I'm seeing it for the first time. I was like, oh my, I'm like, he did what? <laughs> the story arc is just so perfectly crafted, how you get from beat to beat to beat and everything just clicks together like this wild puzzle. It's like, what what, what else can I say about Silence of the Lambs? It's Silence of the Lambs. It's amazing, it's amazing. It just, it makes me happy that movies can be so good. And that is everything. That's every movie I watched in the month of February. Such a short month and yet so many movies to see. I hope this was fun or at least added some movies to your watch list. We'll see if this is going to be a disgustingly long video once I edit it. Uh, but if it is, thank you for sticking around. Let me know what the best or worst thing you watched in the month of February was. And I'll probably be doing this again next month. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But that's going to do it for me today. Until next time, keep it creepy, stay spooky, goodbye. <laughs>